Thank you for watching. My name is Glenn Morgan, and this is We the Govern. Today, we're not going to be talking about how Governor Inslee is trying to put a mask on the Washington state flag. Instead, we're going out to the coast to look at a tsunami of corruption that is hitting the city of Ocean Shores. All right, so in Washington state, there are a lot of wonderful cities and places all over, but nothing tends to strike the imagination as much as some of the coastal cities in Washington state. One of which we're gonna be talking about today, Ocean Shores, where there is a tsunami of incompetence and other problems that seem to be hitting that community sort of all at once. So it's one of those things that's just really worth talking about right now. Now, Ocean Shores is located in Grays Harbor, out on the coast, the Pacific coast, and the Pacific Ocean is on one side of their peninsula, which is the city makes up the entire peninsula, and you have the waves crashing from the Pacific Ocean on one side and the quieter waters of Grays Harbor on the other. And it was originally founded in the 60s. It was kind of intended to be this place where uh, they were going to be doing uh, a lot of gambling and golfing and stuff like that. And then they had a lot of financial problems. And so the city has kind of struggled going up and down since the 1970s. Now, this video is really based largely on an article that I just wrote a few days ago under the same title. And in that article, I provide a lot more detail about what I'm going to be discussing today, including source documents. You can find the article if you look down in the description of the video here. But inevitably, when I'm doing stories like this and we're talking about problems in local government, inevitably, either the bureaucracy or the politicians or both tend to be involved. And when it comes to political leadership in Ocean Shores, you cannot talk about anything politically related there without talking about the mayor, the mayor of Ocean Shores. Her name is Crystal Dingler, and she has been mayor there since 2011. And this is an important person because many of these decisions and situations that we're talking about here, she was directly involved in. Specifically, a few days ago, the fired Ocean Shores uh, fire chief when won a significant case in federal court where he was awarded more than $730,000. It was actually $734,000 for unlawful termination and really the uh, mayor specifically of Ocean Shores violating state law and contract law when she fired him. Now, what's significant about that is not so much that there was some kind of argument over a contract or somebody getting fired. It's that the mayor specifically, first, that she's an attorney. Uh, this is somebody who has a law degree and uh, is very proud of it. In fact, she actually lists her bar license right in her bio on the city Ocean Shores uh, website. So she is an attorney. But yet, despite having a background, and theoretically, if you've passed the bar and gone to law school, you should know, at least have a passing familiarity with the law, but she didn't even try to follow the law and clearly broke the law as was ruled recently in federal court. And the problem with this isn't so much losing the lawsuit, but the fact that now the taxpayers of Ocean Shores get stuck with a $734,000 bill plus another $300,000 or more in legal costs that the city incurred trying to fight this case in federal court. And this was a decision that was solely made by the mayor uh, arbitrarily without even following the law, for somebody who should know better. In theory, if you again, if you've got a law license, you should know better than this. Now, the question is why? Why did this actually happen? And it's kind of a fascinating backstory because it doesn't make the mayor look any good, any, any better, really, in this case. Originally, she hired uh, this Chief Bathke, who had, uh, was brought in t 2017 in the city of Ocean Shores to run the fire department because of problems they had with overtime abuse. They had a bunch of firefighters there, most of whom don't live there who had been kind of uh, basically creating a situation in which there was a lot of extra overtime occurring. And this was raising the cost to a small city like Ocean Shores. That was pretty significant and it's fairly normal and reasonable for them to bring in somebody like this guy who had about 40 years worth of history when they brought him in, 40 years of experience, to kind of get control of the situation and bring it under control, which it appears that he actually did. Uh, by all reports, it looks like he cut some of their overtime costs by about 40%. Now, no surprise, the local union complained about this. It's not so fun when you were kind of planning to milk the system even more and you had a lot of expectations about the overtime money you're going to get. You're probably not going to be so happy when somebody's running a tighter ship and not allowing for excessive overtime charging. And so, of course, they complained and said they had a vote of no confidence against him in early 2019. And the problem with that is that in early 2019, this was an election year. And so when this vote of no confidence came up, 
uh, instead of going through a process, which listen, the mayor should be able to fire the fire chief if she needs to, but there's a process you still have to go through, particularly when you've signed a contract. And as somebody who is a lawyer should know, you need to pay attention to the contract first, but that's not what she did. She decided just to ignore the contract and fired uh, Chief Bathke as the federal uh, settlement, basically, the, settle, the judgment clearly shows. Now, unfortunately, one of the things that kind of looks shady in this situation was that the local union, who had done the no, uh, the, the, the no confidence vote against this, uh, this fire chief, immediately turned around, endorsed the mayor afterwards, and helped her in her campaign. Most of them couldn't vote for her because they didn't live there. And so they went out and worked for her on her campaign, putting up signs, doing all kinds of stuff like that to help her get elected. And uh, Mayor Dingler really needed their help because in the end, in 2019, when that election went down, she barely won by the skin of her teeth with just three votes to spare. So union help was critical in this case. And probably from her perspective at that time, that looked like a good bet. I mean, regardless of the liability she stuck the city with, she got reelected and she was able to get this critical group of people to come and help her on her campaign. And so it probably seemed like a pretty wise move at the time. But unfortunately, when we talk about corruption in government, oftentimes, uh, when, especially when it comes to voter corruption, we're looking at situations where people are concerned about somebody buying votes, you know, trading cash for votes or whatever. In this case, what we're really looking at is something different, where basically the union, uh, she's handing uh, the union the head of the fire chief, saying, hey, I'll get rid of this guy. Let's take him out of your life, and you won't have to have him hold him, have him hold you accountable, even though that's why we hired him in the first place. And in return, I want you to help me get votes out there as an elected official. Uh, that's shady. It doesn't look good. It's politics, but it's ugly, and it unfortunately stuck the people who live in Ocean Shores and pay the bills uh, with a million dollars. A million dollars they have to pay for nothing. Totally wasted, just flushed away based on a very selfish decision that could have been avoided. Even if the outcome had been to remove this fire chief, she could have gone through the legal process and she didn't even bother. And that unfortunately is going to cost the taxpayers a lot. By itself, maybe I wouldn't be doing a story about Ocean Shores right now, but that's not all and that's a problem. Now we're gonna to go to the systems collection building. Originally in my article, I called this a maintenance building, but the proper term for it is the systems collection building, which is located in Ocean Shores right now. When it was originally, they were it was proposed to the mayor and the city council, they estimated it cost about $900,000 to build this building. It's nothing particularly fancy as you see here, some garage, about half of it's a garage on one side, place to park vehicles and all that. And on the other side is two stories, simple office building, some showers, you know, a place for some of the maintenance people who work in the wastewater treatment facility to come and get cleaned up. It's a very simple building, nothing fancy, $900,000, a pretty fair estimate of what it would cost to build it. But instead, what happened is shortly after that, they have a one bid, which means they didn't have three bidders bid on this. They only had one jump in and put a bid on, which suddenly instantly doubled the price of the building for no apparent reason. And then on top of that, when they actually went around to build it, it ends up costing them $2.4 million. Now, the reason why this is so significant is that the qu question that it raises is, is anybody paying attention to this? And I've raised this issue in other jurisdictions in the past. Capital app budgets are oftentimes overlooked and abused all the time in this bidding process where they'll, uh, jurisdictions that really aren't following the law or aren't trying to follow the law, they aren't getting three bids. Uh, they're basically pre-selecting their vendors and having certain people build the buildings even if they don't do it efficiently, don't do it well, or don't do it right. And nobody's really paying attention because they usually bond these expenditures and basically shift the cost into future generations or future payments. So it's an easy way to basically reward political allies, get something up that makes it look like you accomplished something, but pay the bill later on. And so I've always been critical of a lot of the infrastructure projects that we've seen a lot of local cities do. Thurston County, I've wrote some articles about it. But this is really one of these cases where it's showing that something, nobody's really paying attention, nobody's watching what's happening here. That's a problem. Now, that's not all. In addition, in Ocean Shores, there's a beautiful golf course there. And it's kind of famous. It, it, it was had its heyday really in the 60s when you had people like Clint Eastwood or Pat Boone, who actually moved to Ocean Shores for a time, uh, playing on this golf course. They really had high expectations for where it was going to go and what it was going to be like to, to be out there playing. And so this golf course is run by the city. It, it's kind of a feature part of the d original development of Ocean Shores. But uh, it's gotten a little bit more attention than they probably wanted 
because the state auditor had kind of looked at it and there had been some questions raised, not by the state auditor, but by a group called Rebound, which was actually a building trades organization, mainly focused on union uh, prevailing wage contract law and some other specialties that they're focused, so more of a pro-union group in the building trades, they did an audit themselves and they actually recommended in a fairly extensive report, 10 pages, uh, lots of addendums, a lot of exhibits here, and they identified a number of state laws that were being violated by Ocean Shores in their contract arrangement that they had at their golf course, L&I violations, safety violations, uh, bidding contract violations, and other things, and they recommended the state auditor do a more thorough and focused audit of this public facility. Now, there was a response, to be fair. Uh, the vendor there, Kurt Zander, whose turf care is the name of the company, and he actually responded and presented a different story. He said, hey, listen, I'm the hero in Ocean Shores. I have saved this city tons of money. This golf course is uh, would have gone under long ago if it wasn't for me. My actions uh, and all the, the ways that I was able to do this electric work myself or put these sprinklers in or fix a bridge that was decaying or do, uh, do all these other things, if, if I wasn't able to do that, the city would have lost the golf course long ago. Essentially, that's what he said in his response. So there's two sides of the story going on right now. And, you know, regardless of which side you fall out on believing, there were a lot of questions raised in this investigation, even in the response that Mr. Zander gave there. And it really is something that if you live in the city of Ocean Shores, you're a taxpayer, you need to dig into stuff like this. So number one, it looks like the golf course is clearly struggling. So regardless of how many thousands of people are going out there playing golf, financially, there seems to be a common consensus that something's wrong, it's not doing well. It's also very clear you've had one vendor for several decades running the show here at every level, the pro shop, the, the snack shop, and all the maintenance and all this stuff. It's probably a pretty big job. It's probably a lot of work. And probably a lot of it happens behind the scenes where nobody's really paying attention. And instead of paying the rent, which was kind of the original agreement here that they would be in order to run this golf course and kind of have the exclusive to run these shops and manage it and, and collect the money for the people who are playing golf, they basically were going to trade their rent essentially for the maintenance costs that they were, they were doing. That's kind of an unusual arrangement. It's not typical, but it's, it's not necessarily illegal, but it's kind of strange. And it doesn't seem like there's a lot of documentation for what's been going on. In addition, the report seems to indicate from Rebound that they are breaking state law in a number of different areas, prevailing wage in other areas. And uh, regardless of whether you believe uh, the vendor and that he's the hero of the day or this report from Rebound and that the whole place needs to be audited, there is a clear indication that they need far better financial transparency and clarity as to what these contracts really mean, what the relationship is, something in writing, not just some verbal uh, explanation for how they've got to where they are and what's going on. And this is not too much to ask for because the local residents of Ocean Shores have a good right to be skeptical about anything that they're told about what's happening in their community. I mean, just as another recent example, the uh, former uh, executive director named Piper Marie Leslie, who was head of the uh, Ocean Shores Chamber, she was the executive director for the Ocean Shores Chamber of Commerce, she was just charged with felony fraud and uh, pled guilty just a few months ago for stealing money from the chamber. And why that matters is that the city of Ocean Shores, the taxpayers, had been giving tens of thousands of dollars, up to about $60,000 it looks like, to subsidize the local chamber of commerce. And yet somebody there was stealing money uh, during this whole time. And at least there was a fraud investigation and, and a crime that caught the person who was stealing the money. But this is the kind of thing that seems to be happening in this community. It happens one place, that's a problem. But when it keeps happening in numerous places like this, there's something going on and the people who live there have a right to be skeptical. And in the end, one of the questions that they should be asking is who's in charge? Now, technically and especially in a strong mayor system like Ocean Shores, that would be the mayor. So Mayor Crystal Dingler, she is in charge and in theory, she should be paying attention to what's happening out there. And many of us love Ocean Shores. Yeah, I've grown up as a kid going out there. The environment's beautiful. They have uh, you know, some of these, these kitschy kind of uh, gift shops like this, the shark tooth. I've, my kids love getting photos in front of this when they were younger. Now, I've been going out there since I was a kid. This is a fun place to go. It's neat. There's a lot of very classic Pacific Northwest environment out there. It's not a California beach. It's a Washington State beach, but it's beautiful. It's sandy. It's, it's huge. It's a great place to fly kites. 
Yes, it's often rainy like this photo is <laughs> indicates here. And it's a place where even in January, you can go to uh, the Roanoke Conference, which in some ways has helped put Ocean Shores back on the map. Uh, to be full disclaimer here, I'm on the board of the uh, uh, Roanoke Conference myself. But I love Ocean Shores. We want Ocean Shores to be a healthy, sa you know, safe, effective, honest environment. We don't want it to have all these problems. Even if we don't live there, all of us, many of us like to go out there and spend time. And it just needs to be addressed. Now the question is what can you do? If you live in Ocean Shores, or if you live in any other community where you find similar things going on, demand accountability and competency. It is not too much to ask for your local elected officials and the bureaucrats to be at least marginally competent with the tax dollars that you're giving them. And some level of accountability really is needed. Demand transparency. If you can't tell what they're doing, something's wrong. If they can't make it easy for you to tell what's going on, if they're fighting you on transparency or resisting requests for information or not making it easy to find it in the first place, that requires you to, to ask a lot more questions and you need to keep asking questions until they're answered. Something is wrong if they're not willing to ask those questions or if they get defensive about it. In the end, sometimes you just get people who get ossified into government and they want the power so much and the prestige of the position or the attention or whatever, maybe it's money, that you just need to shake up the political process. And I know people have, uh, when I did a radio show on this recently, somebody was asking about a recall petition or uh, maybe somebody else running for office. Whatever those options are, that's something that local people have the ability and uh, opportunity to do, and they should be willing to do that. But most importantly, don't sit back and just get frustrated. Uh, start working with others in your community. When you see something that frustrates you or something that's wrong where you live, Find other people who might share that frustration or who may ha have a different skill set that you can work with them on to help expose what's actually happening. There's a lot more to elected office than just being a prop for Governor Inslee when he does his photo sessions. Uh, as Mayor uh, Dingler knows well, Governor Inslee will invite you to come out and sit up there and do something that sounds feels kind of cool, it's kind of important, you get a lot more attention, a lot of immediate attention when you do that. From a small town in Washington, that's kind of a neat thing to do. But there's a lot more to having a community like this than just those uh, props. We need some level of competency. It's, maybe it's not a total tsunami of incompetence and corruption. Perhaps it's just the rising the tides or a storm brewing on the horizon. But either way, cities like Ocean Shores don't deserve to get swept away by waves of problems or incompetence or wastes of money or poor decisions or bad political activity or decisions that are made for selfish reasons and not for the better needs of the community. There are opportunities to fix this and it starts with just exposing it and getting involved. And whether you live in Ocean Shores or another community like this or a small or large community, when you get together with other people, you really can make a difference. Now, I wanna thank everybody for watching. If you want to learn more, please go to wethegovern.com. Also, I have linked down below, both to the article that this video uh, is, is referencing here, and to a lot of the source documents, which you'll find linked up in that article below. I encourage you to subscribe, share this video with others, and uh, if you want a place to go and you are in Washington State, Ocean Shores is a beautiful place to spend the weekend, spend a day. You can't go wrong and you'll never regret going out there. And with that, I just want to remind everybody who cares about these issues, the future does belong to those who show up.